Safe drinking water, free of pathogens and impurities has been an expectation within our standard of living for decades. In April 2014, the city of Flint, Michigan changed that premise as over 100,000 residents were unknowingly exposed to contaminated water with high levels of lead. In the United States, um, I think there's this level of unawareness of not knowing that over 170 million Americans today are impacted by radioactive materials or carcinogenic chemicals in their drinking water. My name is Jim Connor. Welcome to Game Changer Silicon Valley. This segment of tonight's show will discuss how we protect the quality and safety of our drinking water. My guests are Mina Shakaram, CEO and founder of Ketos, a company focused on analyzing the quality of water, and Monty Nguyen, an active angel investor and mentor to the company. Mina and Monty, welcome to the show. Mina, let me start with asking you to give us an overview of just how serious is this water contamination issue. Thank, thank you for having us today, Jim. Now, the quest for safe drinking water has is, is always been a battle, and I think it's a long-prong approach of, you look at overall water availability, and there are two aspects to it. There's the safety aspect of it, and then overall water availability and the efficiency of water. In the United States, um, I think there's this level of unawareness of not knowing that over 170 million Americans today are impacted by radioactive materials or carcinogenic chemicals in their drinking water. That being said, the tap water is still much more regulated than bottled water. And people believe that just because the water is clear, it doesn't mean it's safe. And I think fundamentally, United States is going through, along with several other countries, um, this process of looking at infrastructure and revamping infrastructure from hundreds of years. And I think the lack of infrastructure in terms of advancements in technology have not been applied into this specific industry. Mm -hmm. And as you start seeing this industrial IoT or automation happening, I think the water industry and the entire utility industry is going to go through that in the next decade. So I, I think that there are, from my limited perspective, two types of contamination. One is runoff from the land with fertilizers and all the mm -hmm. other kinds of contamination. And the other one is infrastructure, meaning in the pipes, right. or somewhere in the filtering system, or somewhere in the chemical treatment. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Well, there's several, even mm -hmm. more, because now you look at contaminants, there's groundwater contamination, and then you start mm -hmm. looking at fracking and mining. Um, you have the fertilizer and pesticide from the ag to agriculture side of it. You also have um, other waste coming into mixing into water. See, the water that we think of is, everybody has this imagination of the Sierra Nevadas and the snow-clad peaks and the water coming, but there's the entire infrastructure of water coming from that source across multiple distribution points to your tap. What are the products or the services that you're offering to address this problem? Sure. So Ketos fundamentally uh, has been built because of bringing the integration of water and the IoT network and the smart connected networks with data science. And we believe that having proactive capability and the early warning notification capability at least gives you an upper hand for avoiding another flint from happening because there are several cities across the U.S. just on the brinks of making that happen. And providing and empowering cities and businesses with those tools can revolutionize how we look at water data. Very good. So, Monty, welcome back to the show. This is your second visit as a oh, guest. Thank you so, for having me. At what level have you, are you engaged in this technology or are you more engaged with the entrepreneur? You know, I have to say that I'm probably more engaged with Mina as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Um, I love the space. I love the IoT. My background is in networking. Um, you know, when I first graduated from college, I went and worked um, at the tech center in Warren, Michigan. So Flint is near and dear to my heart. And there's a lot of serendipity in life. So in the summer of 2016, we were traveling in uh, Italy. And of course, if you look at the Roman Empire and how that died, a lot of that had to do with lead poisoning. Right. So it was a lot of those things coming together. So when I was at the Watermark Conference, and um, I was on a panel about women investing and mentoring, and then Mina came up and say hello afterward, and we just hit it off. Um, I saw in, my, in front of me a woman who is dedicated, passionate, driven, mm -hmm. and uh, working in a space that I think is very, very much needed for public mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we connected, <coughs> and uh, we've been in touch ever since. So this was yeah. a, um, what can I say? Was this a value-added relationship? Did it work? 
immediately for you, or did Monty force her ideas into your head? How did that, how did that take place? No, uh, I, I think uh, mentors are, you know, a lot of people talk about, hey, you want to be our mentor and, you know, build that relationship. I, I think when I look at mentors, to me, it's about who are the right people uh, who can be sort of build, help you build this village ecosystem of support. Uh, this is not something you can accomplish alone. And I think Monty has been a terrific resource in terms of kind of keeping you on track and being able to help you sort of validate that you are indeed separating the signal from the noise and kind of moving forward. And talking to Monty and just leveraging her as a soundboard, sounding board just to talk about, uh, you know, these are your challenges and have that level of transparency is very rare. And I think um, I absolutely cherish that relationship. Yeah, I want to just touch basically in your early years of when you tried to start the company and you then decided to start a cash generating business to <laughs> fund your, your idea. Right. How did that happen? What, ha what happened there? Well, you know, the... Uh, Typically, when you come into fundraising, and um, I started Kitas around uh, fall of 2015, and within six months of building a proof of concept and having sort of your handful of milestones, it was interesting for me to talk to several seed investors and angel investors and realize that the market is very different. What you, the ideas that you have of how software startups have fundraising versus hardware startups, especially in the space of clean tech and water is kind of considered uh, this intersection between impact and clean tech. And, and so no one looks at this as a core enterprise tech. So we're sort of you know disrupting the market with multiple integration points. And so it was also difficult for investors from different angles to kind of come together. And I realized the bar is very different. Uh, the bar for me was, you know, just the amount of milestones. They wanted to see a proven hardware product with customer, with revenue, and pilots for a seed round. And I realized, okay, let me have a reality check um, and go back to the drawing board and figure out, can I accomplish these milestones in a year? How do I sustain for that one year? And I was no way going to give up. Uh, I had put in over my entire cash savings of last 15 years of my career into this. So for me, it was all in. And uh, so in terms of the impact and what I wanted to accomplish, I had to be creative. And I believe um, in terms of taking risk, my metrics are pretty high. So I created a, a consulting engineering company with all the background and the infrastructure I had and drove that company to success. Within a year, we were about 30 employees, between zero and 30. And you know, somebody would think I'm absolutely crazy driving two companies, two startups on your own. But you gotta be creative. It's about being resourceful. And I talked to Monty about it, and she was like, no, do what you gotta do. Were you a part of that? I think okay. that, that inherently within her, the sense of, of survival, the sense of the, the will to succeed and I think in many ways, you know, I, I, I see a part of that in myself, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I think, like, we kind of resonate, right? Mm -hmm. And it also, being an, an angel investor, I'm also very realistic about mm -hmm. it. You know, mm -hmm. to go out, raise money for a clean tech-related deal, hardware-oriented, where you're not going to, you know, have the hockey stick, that you're going to have millions and millions of revenue over 18 months. Realistically, you have to come up with money from somewhere to fund it. You do quite a bit of mentoring. Yes, I do. What would be your advice to a woman entrepreneur, in this case, who is looking for a mentor? Gosh, you know, that's kind of like a, a bit challenging, right? Because everybody looks for something different. Um, from the, the investor perspective, I think a good angel investor has three elements, right? Somebody who has the, the um, financial capital, the emotional capital, and the intellectual capital. So that's what I would look for if I were to look for a mentor. Yes, you can put money in with financial resources, but you have to have the desire to help, which is emotional capital. And you, you need to have the intellect to help, right? To know that this person can absorb this kind of information at this point in their development and deliver that. This person is ready to, make this, to have this kind of introduction to this group of people that give them the foundation to go to the next step. So I, I think that notion here of the elasticity and awareness between the two entities. Um, I think it's very, very important for entrepreneurs to understand that a s overnight success takes 10 years, 15 years to build. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's a major turnoff when I see an entrepreneur who thinks that in 18 months they're going to flip the company and they're going to be this fabulous success and they're going to go up and be a VC. 
<laughs> and, and you see enough of that, kind of like, well, you know, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> it takes a long time, and it takes a lot of perseverance, persistence, yeah. and the will to, to succeed and to survive. Yeah. What's your um, future here look like then? I mean, you, you're in these prototypes with cities and, and various other organizations, correct? Is there going to be a breakout period for the company in your sense, in your mind? Absolutely. So our products are at a stage where we've proven it. We've deployed it across uh, U.S., India, and Mexico. And we've had terrific success in terms of the data we learned, in terms of the optimizations. So 2018 is all about deployments, pilots, and learning. Um, we want to be ready for the market in terms of a widespread deployment in next year. So this year, we're absolutely uh, working very closely with anyone who's interested that makes relevant sense with our use case and value add for us to do a pilot and work with them very closely. Um, because ultimately it's about making sure we're the right fit for them. Right. So, Monty, you've had a great run here as an angel investor. You're extremely well-known, deal lead. We belong to three angel groups in the Bay Area. What's, like, what's coming down the road here for the next 12 months, maybe 18 months, for startups in the Silicon Valley area? What I see is that a lot of people who think, uh, not, not quite get rich quick, but the notion of, oh, this is easy. And then there's this romanticism of being a founder, a CEO, and the cocktail circuits. Okay. So, so I, I, I see that the, I'm still looking for the type of entrepreneur like Mina, you know, the, the, the one who has a solid idea, the one who pursue it regardless whether there's money on the table or not in terms of funding, and the one who just keep on going regardless of the naysayer. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that it's harder and harder to find those entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, next you know, 12 months, the next 24 months, I'm looking a lot more toward mentoring. Uh, I mentor for you know, different universities as well as you know, through various angel groups. And try to find that, um, that rare pearl of an individual, okay. of an entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah, very good. Well, I want to thank both of you for your time tonight. And uh, if someone would like to contact the company, what, what would be the best way to do oh, that? Please go to our website, uh, www.ketos.co, and uh, you can drop in a note, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be happy to reach out to them. Otherwise, happy to share my email address. It's mina at ketos.co. So, Monty, if um, some aspiring entrepreneurs want to contact you, what is the best way to do that? Or would you rather have them find a way to be introduced to you? You know, I'm more than happy uh, to meet with entrepreneurs and especially, you know, um, female entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, there, there is that helping hand, uh, the extra helping hand. So they can reach me at Monty at sandhillangels.com. That would be one, one venue. And um, I'm also at Monty at bannonangels.com <laughs> and I think a few others. Yeah, you got so, it. So, um, you know, there, there are many, many ways to reach me. Yeah, there are but, several ways. Um, That's right. Good. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming by. I really enjoyed this. A delightful story, and I'm going to have to be far more aware of what's going on with my water. When we have you back, we'll talk about the actual tech and the IoT that you use to measure this. And thank you so much, Monty, for bringing Mina to my attention and, and uh, suggesting this, this concept and this topic. So um, I uh, want to wish you both every success going forward. Thank, thank you, you for having much. us. If you enjoyed this show, give us a like or subscribe by clicking on this icon. There are links below to follow us on social media or to watch the complete show. 